Diabetics drink half of the amount of alcohol than those who do not have diabetes. It is believed that that may be likely because their providers tell them, you know, not to drink when they're on certain medications or they fear and they do not know how drinking will impact their blood sugars. Will it cause their blood sugars to go up? Will it cause their blood sugars to go down? All of this confusion really makes patients fearful of what to do with alcohol. Well, today guys, I am going to teach you all about alcohol and diabetes and if you should drink or not. So make sure you guys are tuning in and let's get started. So guys, again, I wanna thank you for tuning in into my channel, The Voice of Diabetes. If you are new, consider subscribing and hitting that notification button so you do not miss any videos I upload here on a weekly basis. And as you know, I'm the diabetes expert here to educate you on everything you need to know about diabetes and managing your diabetes, so make sure you guys are watching. It can be very confusing on how much alcohol consumption you should drink. There's so many studies out there and it can get very tricky as to what drink is actually good, what drink is actually not bad, red wine, white wine, you know, it, it really is confusing for a lot of people and a lot of my patients say, you know what, the heck with it, I don't know what to do, so I'm just not gonna do it at all and there's nothing wrong with not drinking alcohol, obviously. Um, so I'm not encouraging alcohol by any means. If you don't drink, good for you. That's great. You don't even have to worry about it. But if you are a social drinker and if you like to go out with your friends, maybe have a cocktail here, happy hour, five o'clock somewhere, whatever that may be, then you obviously want to watch this video because I want to teach you about what the recommendations are. So as I mentioned, we say the moderate drinking is okay, but what exactly is moderate drinking? Usually we say one drink a day for females and then two drinks for a male. I'm actually talking about smaller quantities than you may think. So we know that not every cup and every glass out there is the same size. So of course your glass and my glass can't possibly both mean one drink. So the way they broke it down to is a five ounce glass of wine is considered one drink per day. 12 ounce of beer would be considered one serving or one drink per day for a male. And then if you do one and a half ounces of 80 proof spare alcohol, that would actually be one full serving as well. There are some studies that say that consuming moderate amount of alcohol can actually be okay for you and that it won't play any role factor into making diabetes management worse. However, we have to be careful because of course having two, three glasses or a big 12 ounce glass of wine is obviously not moderate and we know that that's going overboard and statistically speaking that can and is linked to higher heart disease than people who do not drink. So drinking of course can be fun and we can drink to kind of celebrate and have fun with our friends, our families or celebrating events such as weddings or birthday. However, aside from that, we have to be very careful because alcohol consumption can actually cause hypoglycemia. I just had a patient in this week who asked me, my sugars are always going low after I drink alcohol and I don't understand it. Well, I obviously um, had to sit down and explain to him what is actually happening. But you wanna be careful because if you are on a sulfonylurea, the glimepiride or gliburide, glipizide, um, that class of medication is actually notoriously known for causing possible lows. The combination of alcohol and that can actually be very dangerous. So those patients, I always caution them to be extremely cautious or refrain from alcohol. And also my patients on insulin are also at the same risk for developing low blood sugars. Um, having one glass of wine with your dinner may not throw you over the board. You might be just fine. But we have to remember that each person behaves differently and of course you have to remember what you're eating. So you're probably wondering, well, what the heck? This doesn't make sense. How does my blood sugar actually go low drinking wine or drinking an alcohol beverage? The organ that is responsible for this is actually your liver. The liver stabilizes our glucose levels and what it does is it stores carbohydrates and it releases them into our bloodstream when we need them. At times when we are fasting, so meaning during the night, when you are not eating, your body still needs glucose, your liver wakes up and says, okay, here you go. Here's some sugar to keep you going through the night. And of course, in between meals when we're not eating. The liver is also responsible for breaking down toxins and then the kidneys flush them out. So when we are drinking alcohol, the liver has to make a decision either to work on giving you glucose when you are, you know, when you need it, 
or to uh, break down the toxin of alcohol. So in this case, what it does is it starts to, to break down the toxins of alcohol because the liver cannot really multitask very well. So in this case, let's just say you're out with your friends and you're grabbing a drink. What happens is there's no glucose being released by your liver. So when you're drinking alcohol, what can actually happen is your blood sugars plummet. So this is another reason why drinking alcohol can be scary, especially with patients who are on certain medications because you just don't know how your liver is going to behave and therefore um, your blood sugars can go very low. Now, I'm not saying that you can never drink and I'm not saying that every time you drink, you're going to go low, um, but patients on insulin and sulfonylureas or just in general on certain medications have to be cautious and have to monitor their blood sugars more closely or make sure that they're eating a well-balanced meal so that way their blood sugars won't plummet as soon as they start drinking. So obviously, we know that over drinking can cause you to become tipsy or obviously very drunk, which I obviously discourage at all costs, especially for my diabetic patients. But the problem with that, guys, is the symptoms can kind of overlap the symptoms of hypoglycemia. And I have a video on hypoglycemia that you can watch. The symptoms of being drunk or obviously being hypoglycemic, which means a low blood sugar reaction. So sometimes patients may not know what's actually happening and they might assume that they just over drink when in fact they're actually having a low blood sugar reaction, which can be pretty dangerous. And that's why I always tell my patients, hey, if you're out and you're having a good time, that's fine. But you want to make sure that you're testing your blood sugars and make sure that you're eating, uh, um, you know, complex carbohydrates and having enough protein so that you're not just having refined sugar where your blood sugar will spike and you, you will plummet afterwards. And with the alcohol on board, that can become very dangerous. Another reason why drinking alcohol can be tricky is because people will assume, well, hey, you know what? I'm gonna have a glass of wine. There's carbs in, in that and my sugar levels should be fine. I don't have to worry about going low. Wine and different alcoholic beverages will actually contain very little carbohydrates. And sometimes patients will assume that their sugars will be fine because the, the drink that they are having contains enough carbs. So that will prevent them from going low. But believe it or not, liquid sugars, they're quickly absorbed by the body. So the carbs that you're getting from your alcoholic beverages won't really do, do much. You can have an initial spike maybe in your blood sugars, but you're going to go low very quickly. And that's why um, you want to make sure that you're being very cautious because when you were eating food that is actually digested much more slowly and therefore that's why it you know we have some protection against lows not that you can't get a low with eating food you can still go low on certain medications but food is digested much slower than liquid sugars for that reason obviously the risk of hypoglycemia is much greater you know you also want to be mindful guys as i said is that these a lot of these drinks can have a lot of calories so of course with diabetics, we always wanna maintain a good and neutral weight and be within our target BMI as much as possible. So sometimes it's easy to lose track because you're having you know two, three or whatever sugary drinks and you're forgetting that they're loaded with calories, which obviously add up and we can pack on a lot of weight. So for that reason, guys, I want you to remember that um, drinking in moderation is obviously uh, recommended uh, not drinking is actually even better there's no studies to show that you know all the studies that we have shows that you know not drinking is obviously the best option but if you must drink you want to be very mindful and you want to make sure that you're at least sticking to the recommendations are drinking with food not on an empty stomach especially if you are on certain medications and of course making sure that you're being mindful and checking your blood sugars more regularly and if you are feeling any symptoms that you you're not sure if you're low or maybe you had an extra drink that you're checking a manual in your blood sugar test because we know that sometimes the continuous glucose monitors may not be able to catch up if your blood sugar level is changing too rapidly making sure you're watching your calorie intake is going to be crucial because we don't want you to pack on weight and then of course that causes insulin resistance and then, you know, obviously making diabetes managing management so much harder. So again, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed my video and I hope you guys learned from this. Um, if so, please share with others that you think may benefit and comment below and let me know what your thoughts are. I will see you guys all next time. Take care.